Uh. Yeah, I see him in the street struggling, young, dumb, and thugging, give a fuck about nothing. Stuck at rock bottom, trying to come up on something. Pumping from sundown to sun. What's up, guys? Just here, back my channel. We're back to reaction to From. This is the season one finale, season one, episode 10. Oh, the places we'll go. And all oh, the places we went last episode, because not only did we go into the woods, but we almost went into light as well. While Sheriff Boyd and Sarah were on the little camping expedition in the woods, trying to see what really is out there and how far they can go that's when they actually had a Blair Witch moment because something attacked their tent that's when the lights appear we started hearing fog horns and earlier on in the episode also while the mom was digging in the basement that huge hole that she's got going on trying to find out the power source she started walking up the stairs and the stairs actually turn into a spiral staircase which I think is from a lighthouse so I don't know how it's all connected why we're seeing it but I'm sure we'll get some answers this episode along with even more questions and I bet a cliffhanger as well but if you guys are watching this on YouTube I'm like five to ten episodes ahead on patreon right now so that's the place to go if you guys really want to see what happens next but if you guys look at my full reaction to the show link to my patreon is down in the description below now subscribe to the channel now's a very good time click that button down below smash the like button while you're there with that said let's jump right in let's check it out let's go let's go to the tower yeah. back with the Cromer knuckle I'm gonna tell you a story it's okay more stories I'm my own stories now Is that Jay? Ah, At least he knocked this what? time. Good morning. I didn't wake you, did I? What's Good morning. No, 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 wait, wait. What, are, what are you doing? This is what the knock What is the biggest problem we have with power in the city? So Val writes this lamp shouldn't even turn on. But it does. Which means that no matter what's going on with the outlets or the wires, what comes out here is the electricity that lights the bulb. Now this, this came here in the back of someone's car. Which means that by all accounts, can't plug it in anywhere. It's completely useless here in our lovely little hand. But if you take the ends of the wire, connect the wires, fix it to the socket, and you screw a little light bulb here back in. Put it back on. And then. It Whoa. works. Huh? You see? So We're going home. And a wire. We could turn Colony House into a giant battery. I'm sure you would have figured it out eventually. <clears throat> Good on him, man. Get some of these snacks. I'm feeling peckish. What do you think, Drive the Tent? Blair Witch. Where do you think we are? What the hell? This is like the mist rolled through. And the rest of you, scour whatever you can. If we can get enough wire stripped and spliced, we can be sending out a transmission before nightfall. He still hasn't given back that bike. My father's name is Jim. Teacup. Uh, yeah. No, actually, yeah, I knew that. You're such an asshole. I'm sorry. Am I? What am I supposed to do here? Oh. Julie. It's fine. I'll be right there. Just stick it up for him. This, uh, this is a really nice moment. You're standing up for your dad. Just cut out the teacup shit. Fine. But I'm calling you spark plug from now on. I like it. Good talk. Okay, they got a new friendship now. I thought you'd be up at the house by now. She's prepared no, for the worst. Just to gather whatever wire she can from the ambulance. You really think sending out some radio signal is going to make a difference? I hope so. I have hope. I definitely think at the end of the episode, we're going to reach someone. What's with the lamp? Uh, I had this in the trunk of my car when we drove in. The globe actually opens up. My roommate in college was a bit of a klepto, so it was kind of like my secret hiding spot. I love these two having a moment here. But it also worries me because this is the finale. Life. This could be the calm before the storm. Have been? It's true. She's gonna tell him. Look, Kenny. I like you. But. but... I'm engaged. <laughs> you know that. No, right. I I do. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have. Uh... I didn't realize he knew I, that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this first. That's My heart is breaking for house, them, though. Because they're probably itching to get started. Ah. Um, I'll see you up there. I'm sorry. I'll I was you. rooting for them. I just hate rejection. We've all been rejected at some point of our lives. Well, hopefully not everybody has, because it sucks, but man. Ah, I don't even like watching it, even if it's not happening to me. Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, of 
course. Uh, not here. Uh, I need you to come with me. All right, and we're here. <laughs> we're where? This is where I was standing the very first moment I signed. Going around and around for hours. Mm -hmm. You haven't even had Nobody your Nobody told her. Yeah, told over, right over there. I've been thinking a lot. You just want to leave. About what you said about going home. I don't even remember anymore who I was before you stepped out of that car. And I don't want to find out who I am without you. This was a romance movie. Oh, shit. I was gonna say, that'd be the mic drop. You are the love of my life. And I would really like to be she yours. She seems hesitant though. I love you. Is there another butt? Okay, wait, is, is there a butt coming? Yeah. There's no butt. This is much better is than Kenny's Calvo. Yes. <laughs> I'm so glad he apologized to his father, made up with him. Because now I can actually like this. It told us what would happen if we stayed out here. Well, unless it told you which direction to go. Boyd, what's wrong? I heard a voice. Where are you? Keep talking. Boyd, who are you talking to? Over here. She doesn't hear it. Boyd, stop. What, what are you the doing? Fuck? Don't go into the webs. Abby? <gasps> Is that her? Spiders all over them. Does she not see it? Oh, oh it bit him. Ah! Oh, she does see him. Way to help, Sarah. I wish Victor was here. I bet he'd really like this. Well, I'm sure wherever he is, he's okay. I haven't seen him in a minute. He's got to do his part right now. His part? Of the quest. He's probably doing something pretty important right now. You should look at those spider bites. Victor's probably going to be out there. But no, you're not. It's what getting dark. Back there? Don't worry about it. There's no way out. Is there? <laughs> this fucking place. Where are you going? Uh, I was just going to help bring up the rest of the wire. No, oh, they already brought the last batch up. Um, yeah, where are you going? Fine, I'm going to get my rolling papers. Sorry, rolling paper. I got one left. I've been saving it. Okay, Dad? There you go. I know how offensive you find my proclivities! Whatever. Oh. You didn't call him teacup. Mom, I'm home. Uh, I didn't realize you'd be here. I, uh, I left something in my bedroom. You know, I, I grew up in France with my grandma. She died. When I was 12, I had to come back to the States. Actually having a real moment here, not joking around. I had to, uh, I had to ride on a plane by myself because there was, um... You haven't seen him like this. I was crying at the airport. This nice lady by my soda, I told her what was wrong. She said to me, they come with you when you go. I think that's exactly what she needs to hear right now. It's not like she's leaving him behind. I guess, I guess what I'm just trying to say is, don't be sad. I'll come with you when you go. Wow, it's actually a beautiful moment. I don't want to see her cry though. It's gonna make me cry. God damn it. They're ready for the top up there. Oh, uh, ready for the top. The, uh... Hey, people! We got snacks. Just get up on the roof. We're about to start. But wait a second. I love this. I legit Where thought he's gonna man? die first Someone episode. Time. Anybody fucks this up, you spend a night in the box. No one is going in the box. Whatever. Hey, that's oh. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Oh. It's like fucking get upstairs. Christ. Pretty exciting stuff out there. You broke my boy's heart. Yeah. You uh you left your lamp thing? Oh. That's not it. I'm sorry. I made things weird. Uh, I, I, no, just hold on. I actually came here to talk to you about something. Part of me really wants to go back to Michigan one day and find out the woman I fell in love with waited for me. That she's still there. That we can pick up where we left off. And it I didn't know that he knew she was married or engaged. 
start our life together. What does the other part want? To go to Iceland. Most amazing guy I met in the most fucked up place imaginable. There we go. Good recovery. Oh, those two sound like pretty good options. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Oh! I don't know. Engagement is off. All right, guys, you ready up there? Yep, uh, so hold on a second. Come on, come on. Nice and easy. That's it, that's it. We're secure! Yes! yes! <laughs> All right, let's make contact. Okay, on three. One, two, come on, three. Come on, let's go. It's working. We got power. We got a signal. If you guys are all done stroking each other down there, you might want to start transmitting sometime today. I'm so proud of you. It's not over yet. Plan. Let's make what? contact. Plan B. You see those clouds out there? Uh oh, it's rolling in. The mist, literally. I can't. You hear that? We're it's going in the again. Right we just, we just need to keep going. Almost there. Now it's raining. These monsters are going to start appearing. Oh! On this one. Lighthouse. On top, on top. Spiral on staircase. Mayday, Mayday. Can anyone out there hear me? This is an SOS call. We need help. Mayday. Here, give me that. All right, what you got to do? Yeah, I know. Remember, we lose this radio and the whole thing's done. Listen, we don't have very much time. Where are you? Whoa, whoa, slow down. Is this Jim? Sorry, what? Jim Matthews. Yeah? Your wife should be digging that hole, Jim. Watch my kids. Watch my kids! What is going on right now? What happened? <laughs> down here. There's the end of it. Oh! You're here. Victor. I said you would come. We have to go. It's not safe here. I'm so lost right now. This is where they sleep. The electronics too. Oh my god. What was that one drawing? We have to go. We have to come now! They are throwing some weird shit at us right now. That voice on the radio? Nathan was right about this place. It's angry now. You have to get inside. Over there. You'll be safe in there. Far away tree. The tree will be safe there. She gave him the rock, the stone. Hey! Hello! I can't even hear that! Damn radio. Of course, it needs to give us a soundtrack for the moment. Oh no. We got some new visitors. God damn, it's pretty much like I said at the very start. They're gonna answer a couple things, but they're gonna throw even more questions at us. And yeah, they definitely did. That voice on the radio, that was one of the biggest questions for me. That definitely threw my mind for a loop here. But before we go any further, all right guys, that was 
from season one, the season one finale, episode 10. Oh, the places we'll go. And my God, there's a lot of things to discuss from the lighthouse to the cobwebs, the spiders, the spider webs. They're my cobwebs. They were actually normal spiders, at least they looked like, but he was definitely bitten by one, might have been poisoned. We didn't see what happened to Sarah when she stuck Boyd in a faraway tree and he ended up in a chimney coffin, stone coffin. I don't know what the hell is going on in this show. We saw the boy White appear too. Like, they threw so much at us at the end. Once they made contact, that's when my mind just went... And for the rest of the episode, I don't even know if I spoke. I was just like in sh utter shock for the rest of the time, trying to figure out what the hell exactly I'm watching and what exactly is going on. But that was when things got super tense. I felt like for the first half of the episode, it was, they, I don't know, they, they kind of tugged at our heartstrings a little bit. There was definitely quite a few emotional moments. My boy Kenny, before I get to the crazy stuff, I'll get this softer stuff out of the way. My boy Kenny, he shot his shot. He's like, when we get out of here, we'll go here. And she's like, yeah, about that. I'm engaged, you know that. I didn't know that he knew that. And she's got somebody, we obviously knew that. She's got somebody waiting for her on the outside. We don't know if she's still waiting for her on the outside. She could be remarried remarried or re-engaged by now, but I don't even know if we're going to make it that far to find out because we need to make it out of this place first. That's first and foremost. But she kind of shut him down, but then she went up to him afterwards and kind of like smoothed things over a bit also because she's like, hey, the truth is, I got somebody waiting for me back home. I definitely want to go back to her. I want to go back to Michigan, go see, live out my life, how it was supposed to be intended, and how I was engaged. I want to be married. This is how it was supposed to play out. And then she's like, but another part of me wants to travel across the world. I think she said like Iceland or Sweden or something like that with this amazing guy that I met here. So he's like, right away, he's like, what are you talking about? So she grabbed out his hand, at his hand reached out for him. And I felt like that was pretty much, because he asked her, what, what are you going to do? By her reaching out, grabbing his hand, I feel like that's the answer. So that's definitely a good sign for my boy, Kenny. I'm happy for him because she is smoking hot. I've said that since day one, but that wasn't the only bit of love that we got this episode also because Ellis, he was acting a little bit like sketchy at first. He's like, I need to speak with you. Like, come with me. She's like, uh, Fatima's like, uh, can we, can this wait? Like, we're kind of doing something at the moment here. He's like, no, can't wait any longer. Just come with me, please. And I felt like it was definitely important that she did go with him, obviously, because what he had to say but based off last episode two when they both had a little opening up with each other also but yeah he brought basically brought her to the spot where he first glanced upon her where they first met where she first came to town he's like yeah you're driving in circles there and then you're you're definitely lost I'm like was nobody stopping her like I, I swear the etiquette in this place but she stopped herself she got out asked for directions and then yeah that it was nice little hearing that little story there and then basically got down on one knee i thought we were to get the exact same moment he even brought up too because she's like i love you and he's like is there a butt coming up is this the butt moment and she's like no no butt no butt so yeah they are officially engaged now so yeah one engagement is off between kirsty and her outside wife or potential, could have been, potential future wife, she is done. It's Kenny now. It's Kenny time. So that relationship is over, and now we got a new official engagement. So that was great to see. Now let's get to some crazier shit, because there was definitely some crazier shit that went down this episode. Once they made contact, once they basically got the radio up there, the tower up there, and got it standing on top of Colony House, that's when they saw the storm rolling in. I was like, oh, fuck. They got to make contact quick. And my prediction was right. Thank God. I don't know if my other prediction was right about Sarah. I'm pretty sure I said that she would be ripped to shreds by the end of the season. There's still time. Who knows? Maybe when season two starts, the very first opening scene, boy, like... He busts out a few of those stones. He gets out of the safety. It's daytime once again. And he just sees Sarah's carcass just lay there. Fingers crossed. We shall see. But for now, he's trapped in a freaking stone coffin. So that definitely sucks for him. But at the same time, he is safe. The little boy said, like, he wasn't even speaking, though. That was all through his mind. They could have had him speak. I don't know. It's interesting the, why they why they had him do that. They could have had him speak. Maybe they just didn't want the kids speaking like that. I don't know. But they sure already showed this episode with... Boyd finding his wife that even if somebody is speaking that doesn't mean everybody's necessarily going to hear that one particular voice so I don't know why they did that it's all being through the mind all being transferred and being spoken to like that it's like tele tele 
telepathic, something like that, telepathy. So, yeah, that was very interesting. But earlier on in the episode, we did see Boyd and his wife. Well, I'm pretty sure that was his wife when he heard her call for help when Sarah did it, when they're going through all the webs there. And she, he went, like, right into the webs. He knew his wife was dead already, so that's kind of surprising that he was ready to risk it for the biscuit. But he actually did it because... He clawed away all the webs. He got in there. I was pretty sure, or I'm pretty sure that was one of the bigger jump scenes, jump scares of the entire episode too, because I sit super close to my screen when I'm watching these episodes for these reactions and super close to the camera as well. And yeah, I was like super focused, super immersed into the episode. And then when that happened, I was like, oh shit. So they definitely got me on that one. I knew it was coming too. It was so obvious, but regardless, they still got me. That was an intense scene. And then that, it was right after that when he got bit, attacked by the spiders. And that was kind of felt like the mist there a little bit, especially with the storm at the end, the spiders, all the cobwebs that were left behind after they were attacked the night before. And at the very end of the episode or right before the end of the episode, they did discover the lighthouse also while they're on their expedition so it actually exists it all makes makes sense now with the boats the fog horns that we were hearing the lights that we were seeing that were spinning too so in the spiral staircase but what really did it for me i think it was my favorite moment of the episode was jim on the radio when he finally made contact and he hears the voice because i was so immersed and so invested i was like all right i knew i knew they were gonna make contact before the end of the season it had to happen there's only that was the only way this show could have gone and then they actually make contact and he's like is this jim i'm like wait what who is this person how did how do they know it's jim and then he's like he says his last name what was his last name morrison jim morrison but He's like, your wife shouldn't be digging that hole. But like, what the fuck? It, it, I, I don't know what's going on. It almost felt like Cabin in the Woods, like a higher power, like an authority corporation running this place when they know there's some really supernatural, crazy shit going on. I have so many questions now. I knew that would happen too. I said that at the very beginning for my intro, like going to this episode. They're going to answer, they're going to give us a couple answers, but for the most part, they're just going to give us even more questions and a cliffhanger. They did exactly that. That's exactly how, not only did I want this finale to play out, but it pretty much had to play out. So yeah, I'm definitely happy with that. But man, oh man, because while Jim was running back there to save his wife, while that was happening, that was super intense. I was like, man, get back to your wife, man. I, just, just save her, please. While that was going on, his wife was still digging. She's back to work, man. This woman was not giving up. She's still digging. She falls through the hole, and then that's when Victor approaches, and that's where he's been, I guess, down with the monsters, hiding out with them because he's like, this is where they rest. So, And he's like, this is where they draw, too. And a bunch of those drawings, I didn't see a lot of them. I really need to go back and kind of pause the screen because... I don't know if it was just basically a map layout of the town where everybody's staying so they know like who to hunt and when somebody is separated from the others, but there was also a red drawing there. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was a red drawing that went up like that and then there's like black lines down in between. That almost seemed like a cloak. I don't know. That seems like a devil authority type of figure for me that I'm looking at, at least from where I'm sitting, but... I don't know. Obviously, we didn't actually see that, but I feel like that was a little bit of a foreshadow of things to come. Maybe season two, maybe even later. Maybe that's like the deepest, darkest, highest power because maybe that's truly what is running the place because I don't, we still didn't see who was, who was actually saying that on the radio, whose voice that was that was speaking to Jim, but yeah, they, they definitely, or she got to the bottom of it where the power was coming from. It was down where the monsters are. So was it one of the monsters? At first, I thought it was one of the monsters because I was like, Jim, you shouldn't be doing this. We're coming for you, Jim. They're coming for you, Barbara. So yeah, it was one of those moments where I was just like, man, this show is freaking awesome. So I'm super hyped for season two. We still don't know Sarah's fate. She stuffed, <laughs> she basically stuffed Boyd into the tree, into the faraway tree, the faraway place. And then he ended up in the chimney, the stone coffin, but we didn't see her. He was calling for her, he's like, Sarah, Walt, Walt. That was his moment there. And yeah, we don't know where she is. I would not be upset if season two starts. He bu he busts his way out, he breaks out of that, that chimney, and then he just discovers her body just, just laying there, like ripped to shreds, like pretty much every other body we've seen. Because honestly, at the, end of the day, at the end of the day, she's responsible for a lot of deaths. I know this sounds super harsh to me, but man, she, it was super harsh what she did too. So she kind of deserves it at this point, even though 
yes, she did save Boyd there. She's trying to make up for what she did. I don't know. She killed her own brother, too. She, she sliced his throat. She killed Kenny's father, Fuhead's father. So I'm still upset about that. And one of the softer moments, too, that I forgot to mention when I was going over, like, the lovey-dovey stuff, the slower parts, uh, the first half of this episode... One of my favorite moments, too, was Jane. Man, he has definitely come around. I think he might be one of my favorite characters in this series. When I thought he was going to die first episode because he was all out on drugs, like he was on acid or something or LSD. I don't freaking know. But he was all like, yeah, I just didn't think he was going to make it that first night. He was like, hey, he's like touching everybody's face. Like, are you real, man? So the fact that he made this far and he's actually smart and, man, he's actually hilarious, too. At first, I was like, man, this guy... He needs to get his ego in check. Like, he's just oblivious. Like, can we just kill off this guy when he's first going through the town? He stole the bike. And he's still using that damn bike that he stole, like, that first or second episode. So, that's freaking crazy. But, I don't know. He definitely came around for me because, I don't know, all the things that he says just makes me laugh. Teacup and then spark plug and then, I don't know, everything he does, he is the freaking man. I, I really hope they don't kill him off. Or if he does die, it's not too soon because, yeah, I'm loving his character. But... One of the things that really made me love his character even more, and I've said this about comedies too, when comedies, obviously it's got to be laugh and love funny. I've said this recently. What was I watching? I think it might have been Violent Night on Patreon, shameless plug. But I was like, one thing I love about like the best comedies is obviously they got to be laugh out loud funny, laugh out loud funny. But when they have those moments when they can actually slow down and it gets real and have an emotional moment too, when the laughs, they're still there, they can give you more laughs afterwards, but they actually give you that emotional moment, that's how you know something is good. That's, I got the exact same feeling from the Jake character here where 90% of the time he's not to be taken serious. Yes, he is smart. He's coming up with this great plan here to make contact. He, he Look what he discovered this, this episode too with the hairdryer and plugging in things based off his conversation with Kenny's mom. But yes, he is a smart character, but he's most of the time he's absolutely hilarious. So the fact that he actually had the moment where things slowed down, he had the real ass moment with Kenny's mom because he had to, man. This this woman, God bless her, because not only is she doing everything for everyone, she's feeding everybody, the entire town, but she's also taking in strangers. And he wasn't exactly the nicest stranger at first, too. Even though he was funny, he was a dick at first. So that's the fact that now he's being super nice to her that I love about him even more. And he kept it real with her. He told the story when he was leaving France and his grandmother had passed. And then uh, he was traveling in the airport and he didn't have anybody to travel with. A woman in the airport even told him like, hey, even though after he told his story to her, she said like, hey, even though you're leaving her, you're technically leaving her body here, she will always be with you. So it was the exact same thing that he passed on to her saying and talking about Kenny's dad where she was feeling a little bit guilty. If they do make contact, and they do leave. They do eventually leave this place. They should be leaving him as well. I just thought that was a sweet moment for him to bring that up to her where he's like, hey, wherever you go, he'll be with you. So that was freaking sweet. Beautiful moment. I really love that. I got super emotional this episode too. This show, man, not only is there horror, comedy, Jade, there's also these super sweet moments that I'm really, uh, if I didn't care about these characters as much as I do already, these moments would be hitting. So that's part of the reason why I love this show already so much. Obviously, the monsters. Very first episode, they had me with monsters. I'm a horror fan. What can I say? And it was super Stephen King-esque as well. But it's really these characters, these cast of characters, these wide, these wide range of characters where they're almost becoming like a family now. But we did see at the very end of the episode that tour bus arriving there. We don't know which cast of characters are going to be arriving for season two, but god damn. This is what I said also. I, I can't remember. It might have been in the very start of the series, but one of the great things about this premise is you can have so many characters. It's like revolving door. Like characters leaving, characters coming, characters going. As soon as you care, kill off one character, you can bring in ten more to make up for them. So, yeah, that's one thing about I absolutely love about the show, and they could definitely keep the show going for seasons to come, but... Man, I'm definitely intrigued by some of the stuff they threw at us at the very end of the episode. From the lighthouse, the boat sounds, the fog horns, the voice, the monsters, the tunnel, the drawings. That one drawing, that super, I don't know, I feel like that was a devil or something. But we still don't know exactly where these people are. We still don't know where Victor and the mom are going to be going. I love how I still call her the mom. Jim, the dad, pretty much for the most part. I do know Julie and Ethan, but the mom, I've, I've pretty much figured out everybody else's name. 
Hers is next on my checklist. I'll tell you that. My season two goal, but unless she dies like first episode, then I'll still keep on calling her the mom. But yeah, this was a great first season, guys. I can't wait to jump into season two. Like I said, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, I'm probably like five to 10 episodes ahead. I can be done season two already. I don't know when season three is going to air. So there might be a bit of a hiatus after season two finishes, finishes and wraps up. But I do have some other shows to react to as well as Chucky will be returning. So yeah. I'm loving this series so far. Man, I just wish it got more views. Not just for my sake, but just so more people actually watch the show. Because also for my sake, I guess. Not, I'm not even talking about YouTube views. But I want this show to go on for a very long time. Because I'm enjoying it that much. This is not a show I want to wrap up in like three seasons. So yeah, five to ten seasons. Please, that's my request. Is that too much to ask for? I don't know. They could wear out its stay, wear out its welcome if they kind of, I don't know, jump the shark at one at some point. But as of right now, at least for me, it has not. So I'm super hyped for season two. Let me know in the comments down below. Does it get even crazier in season two? And without giving out any spoilers, what would you say you prefer? Season one or season two as of right now? Because obviously season three is not out yet. But I think I'm gonna end it there, guys. As always, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. If you guys can like and subscribe, really helps my channel grow. Till next time, I am out. Enjoy your day. Peace. Well, I didn't smoke enough for you, didn't drink enough for you, wasn't fun enough for you, wasn't good enough for you, did you play me like a yo-yo and shit? Well,